Welcome everybody to Radicalize True Survives podcast. I am Heidi Kuda, and to help us celebrate our 100th episode of RadPod, uh, the team brought in the cultural forces of Ukraine's founder, Mikolai Serga. He is a soldier who is part of an 80 member unit of poets and musicians and puppeteers and artists. They're all helping to heal the souls of the wounded. We caught up with Kolya on a 40 day tour of America where these artists are helping to bridge the cultural divide between our countries. Check it out. Automat Kalashnikova, RPG, TM, PM. що коли гармата звучить, то муза мовчить. Насправді муза мовчить, тому що їй нікуди це сказати. Це фронтова студія культурного десанту. Миколай Серга, Саша Чеміров. І наша студія. Цей бус створений саме для того, щоб записувати муз, для того, щоб зафіксувати момент, законсервувати цінності переконання в віруванні військового світу і передати їх в цивільне суспільство чи передати нашим нащадкам. Фіксувати, записувати твори безпосередньо в зоні бойових дій від тих, хто їх народжує прямо там. Співай, доки ще є надія. Спів підноситься понад травою. Це буде жиряка. Ну що, поїхали. Миколай Серга, thank you so much for being our 100th guest. This is an honor for us. Uh, we are so oh, grateful to have met you in Washington DC. And before we talk about your travels in America, can you please inform our viewers how uh, the cultural forces formed and how you walked in with red boots and a fancy scarf to enlist and become a soldier, and what happened then? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, before the war, uh, I was a celebrity. So my career began in uh, 2008. Uh, I, I got victory in the biggest comedy show in Moscow, in Russia. So, uh, so actually, my career began from Russia. And just after that, uh, I became popular in Ukraine. Uh, uh, after this comedy show, it was the Ukrainian Idol. Then it was the most popular TV show about traveling in Ukraine and in Russia. Too. It's called Head and Tails or the uh, It's very funny and very powerful show. And we have more than, actually I have uh, with them more than 100, uh, 100, I think 20, episodes or more more uh, and uh, at all it was about 200 million views so it's, it was very popular show and when the war began uh, i understand that wow uh, like, like my, my old world uh, old world view is ruined totally and i don't know what to do and uh, only the one direction only the one way which i saw to myself it was uh to uh, join the army and actually uh i need to have a concert in mikolaev it's near odessa uh on 24 of february 2022 uh, so that's why i drove to the concert and uh, i stopped because i was uh tired i stopped in odessa in hotel and 
actually slept about a few hours. And in the morning, my aunt called me and said, the war has begun. I said, okay. And begin to figure out what, what, what we can do in this situation. So that's why uh, uh, I had just that uh, costumes, uh, that clothes, which I need for the concert. And when I uh, joined the army, uh, I came to uh, the, my military unit. I came to the big room. And there was a commander inside. He uh, uh, sitting over the map, uh, planning something. And it's, it was about 10 or more uh, soldiers and citizens around him. And I, I was in my costume, fashionable suit, in the quad, in the scarf, and in red boots. So when he was, saw me, he just watched me and said, what, what is that? What is that? Uh, I don't need, uh, I, I need the soldiers, not, uh, not sure, man. But in a few hours, I was uh, in camouflage. I uh, was with the rifle, and uh, it was my first shift. We secured uh, one of the positions where a Russian airborne need to land. So, uh, and my army life was began. But actually, uh, before the war, I learned psychology. I learned psychology actually about 12 years. So different kind of psychology, neuro-linguistic programming. I'm, I have trainer degree. So I learned neuro-linguistic neuro about uh, eight years. Uh, Ericsson hypnotized analytic psychology, classical psychology. Uh, I have a master degree in classical psychology. So and I learned how uh, culture connected, art connected with uh, with psychology. So that's why I have, uh, uh, I have already experience in that. And when I saw that, uh, the stress is very high. Nobody can sleep in my military unit. All the guys, uh, who can't recover. And I understand that I need to do something because we didn't have chaplain or psychologist in, in, in our military unit. And I just proposed that, uh, uh, give me the possibility to uh, collect the people. As commander, he said, he okay, try. And I uh, collect uh, eight or ten people of the first meeting who was off duty at that time. And before my night shift, I made a concert with the poem. With the poetry. And it works. It really works. Uh, everybody was uh, excited about that. Everybody uh, Laughing, uh, eyes are sparkling. Uh, uh, I don't know. It, it was like something very light and very, uh, very beautiful, maybe because it was. I, I don't know. Like uh, it was like an island, uh, a tropical island inside the desert, wow. and it helps us to recover. Uh, recovery and we can sleep we managed to sleep at that night everybody so we understand that it works and I begin to do that every day then I found the guitar of the Capellan and begin to do it with the songs songs working much better because it's uh, music helps to uh, be more fluently and yeah then neighbor units uh, begin to invite me then uh, I I came with my commander to the hospital, to the main hospital in Kiev. And during that time, he decided his questions. I, uh, with the guitar, went from the room to the room and singing for wounded soldiers. Then I invite my friend, uh, Sasha Chemirov, to work with me. He was a volunteer. And after that, I decided that uh, it's the time to create something much bigger. And I began to make it like uh, on another level, officially with all the army bureaucracy system. Uh, I begin to search uh, all the army for the artists. I begin to uh, search for the possibilities how I, I can uh, take them from their military units. 
at first like for the mission and then to uh, move totally. And right now we have big the units we have about 80 artists in our system. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you for that intro. We on this show are very, very inspired by um, Ukrainian people. We're inspired by the courage and bravery and poetry and everything. But when you showed a clip of the puppeteer in the brigade, everybody was crying. It was just so beautiful. And what is it about the response of the soldiers uh, when they see somebody do a puppet show or hear poetry? Why do you think it helps the soul so much? Uh, because it, it, it's it's creating another reality, you know? Uh, and this reality here now uh, is the hard war, uh, is the death of, of your brothers in arms. It's uh, a lot of bomb shellings. It's every minute you have pam, 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 exploding, exploding, exploding. Uh, and you don't, and you sleep in the same places, you eat the same food, you have the same life like every day. Uh, and uh, uh, your brain, your consciousness become tired and become like when you concentrate just on the same things, uh, you lose your flexi flexibility of your imagination, of your consciousness. And uh, when uh, we come with the poetry, with the puppet theater, uh, we create another reality. You need to uh, you need to take advantage of your imagination uh, and uh, to create uh, another reality, another uh, world, uh, which helping you to understand what inside that poem or what inside that. A play, so you need to uh, you need to use your imagination, and it helps you to go from that place where you know to another place, which is not exists just in your imagination. And in this moment, your imagination all the time working, working, working. It's like you know, uh, when your muscles uh, didn't work a lot of time. Uh, your, your body forget yeah, how to use these muscles. But, and at first you need like uh, electra, uh, electrotherapy, I don't remember, like, not that, what, giving you impulse and helping to work these muscles without your uh, uh, will. And after that, you begin to remember how to use it and you can use it. So it's the same with imagination and with em em emotional apparatus. Because our emotional apparatus depend uh, from your imagination because our imagination is the main uh, is the main interface in Thank our you. brain and in, in, in our life. Yeah, Thank because you for that. I, I love how you said that culture prevents rust on the soul, and it may not heal the soul in times of war, but it can stop the rust from penetrating deeper. That's a beautiful line that you said at your TEDx talk. Um, before the guys jump in, I want to ask, you're on a 40-day uh, tour of America right now, and what are some of your thoughts that you can share with us? Ooh, uh, it's a little so, so, You know, right now, uh, I can't uh, uh, reflex it yet because uh, it's too high time uh, of our work. Yeah, we, we just finished in Chicago and moving to Illinois uh, to uh, uh, Indianapolis. We moving to Indianapolis. So um, uh, every day we have a few concerts, a few meeting sessions. Uh, and all the time it's uh, it's amazing. Also, uh, people stand up few or more times for the concert. Like, for example, yesterday, an evening concert, the, the, the people in the hall stand up 12 times. Yeah, and uh, it's impressive that they, they're saying that uh, we understand what you're doing for the soldiers, but what you're doing for us, it's, it's amazing. You help us to remember that we are human. So it, 
yeah and uh, it's the function of us here because we have a lot of different convinces convinces yeah about political currents about inside problems but when you go deeper 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 and deeper where uh, everybody is connected by uh, to the to the high level values and uh, working there is connecting us connecting Ukrainian soldiers, Ukrainian civil people with us, American people, uh, Ukrainian people here in America, Ukrainian people with American, like American citizens, American citizens who doesn't have roots from Ukraine. And everybody is connected on that level, on the level of humanity. And after that, everybody understands that, yeah, uh, right now it's a very big war. The war of all the world is the war for humanity. Because if Russia will win, uh, we will lose the main reason for uh, humanity existing. Yeah. We will lose our soul. So right now it's fight for the soul. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and and that's why uh, what what what, uh, what we are doing, uh, we helping in this fight uh, to not forget for what uh, the soldiers in Ukraine fighting. Don't forget about their soul, because if uh, even if we will win the war on the front line, but we lose our humanity, mm-hmm. uh, the evil will win. Okay. So we need to remember for what we're fighting. Wow. Yeah. Jim. Um, thank you for being here and telling us um, what you're doing. It's incredible. Um, uh, I wanted to ask you about trauma because you've talked, um, uh, you know, a lot about psychology and, and I've studied a lot of uh, the, the way that, that uh, psychological warfare works on people um, and how it uses trauma in order to sort of dehumanize people and to dehumanize others. Um, and uh, I, I just wanted to get your um feelings about how this kind of of cultural outreach music poetry um helps people sort of recover from from trauma because i think i think for me that's that's a one of the main drivers of exactly what you're talking about is how do you how do you dehumanize people how do you make them you know commit atrocities um, and and trauma is a way that they do that. So uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Uh, you, you know, when you when when you begin uh, your question, uh, I at one time was into into uh, into uh, sides of answers. One uh, about the trauma of the soul. Okay, we will not use the word here. Uh, trauma of the consciousness. Trauma of worldview of values and uh, another uh, category is the trauma uh, when you have physical trauma like the uh, um, like the soldiers in the hospitals who lost his legs hands uh, or had another type of heavy injury so it it is different but it it is uh, using the same instrument you know Uh, our main game, because we can tell about the humanity, about a, 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 a lot of different things, but actually it's abstract things. And uh, in these abstract things, everybody uh, find his own words and his uh, own uh, vision. But uh, I have one answer, which uh, like the most simple answer, what we're doing. We uh, trying to help for the soldiers uh, to find their sense, to find their hope. Because it's, you, you remember Viktor Frankl and his uh, uh, logotherapy and his book uh, uh, about the psychologist in the concentrate uh, camp. So it is <laughs> so difficult and so simple at one time. Uh, when, when the person, I, it actually didn't uh, create the Victor Frankl treat. I don't know. I don't remember who who told that that 
Nietzsche, I think. Yeah, Nietzsche. Friedrich Nietzsche. That if you uh, know for what you're doing something, you can go through each how. So we need to help the soldiers. We need to help them uh, find uh, the right answers for their questions, which take a lot of energy and attention in their life. Uh, and when we propose these answers through the metaphor, through the um, art, uh, they find this answer by themselves, and they took that, and they eyes eye, uh, like sparkling. They understand what they need to have in the future to do uh, everything they need. Uh, they need to do uh, everything to go through the these difficult objects through, through the war. So the same with the injured uh, guys in in, uh, in the hospital. Oh, actually, when guys lost his legs, uh, they understand that every pictures of the future which they told before from their childhood about their future uh, doesn't work because in every pictures they was with legs. Right now they doesn't have legs and they will not have them. And uh, at first we need to cut this connection between the old dreams and uh, their life. And after that, uh, they need to create new dreams, a lot, a lot of new dreams and new quality of them. And they need to understand how they can use this new, uh, um, uh, new kind of them, new uh, uh, qualities uh, in in the future. And for that, they need imagination. Because at first, before they will leave this future, they need to create this future. They need to create uh, not just pictures of the future. They need to create uh, the connections with the people inside their mind. Well, with the connection with themselves, we, it's like you re, rewrite new life, and yeah, of course, it's a big uh, part of responsibility for society, for the government to create everything for them, everything for comfortable living for them, like uh, pandas is uh, like uh, like infrastructure. But at first, they need to see it in, in their head, and for that, they need imagination. So that's why. Uh, culture is the best catalyzer uh, for imagination. It's the best stimulus. Uh, so that's why uh, culture in that way, in that situation, helps to uh, massage the imagination. Yeah. Yes, and and... Uh, help this imagination to work and to create new and very difficult uh, images. Thank you so much for that. Um, one of the things that I think is very important about the work that you're doing is you also celebrate Ukrainian culture and Ukrainian music and art from uh, the you know archives of uh, Ukrainian past. And so can you speak a little bit about why it's so important to celebrate your own culture and the work that you do? Uh, uh, because... You know, culture is the reflexi uh, uh, of talented people about the events in their life and in their history. So uh, it helps to uh, create connection with the roots, not just for Ukrainians, and for the people to see the roots of Ukrainian culture. You see that it's, it, it wasn't created here and now, just we have a long history, we have a, a long uh, history of culture. So that's why when you're showing uh, the diapason of that, when you're showing the depth, deepness of that, when you show uh, how different than that, and especially when you're not just playing the composition and you're telling the story about that, you're telling the composer, uh, it, 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 it uh, helps to create another reality. Uh, in the head, uh, in the imagination of the uh, visitors of a concert. And they, uh, you know, when you're given the present culture, it's writing on one, uh, in one space, on, in one level, in one stage. When you're given like in present, in past, in 
more fast. And then in future, uh, it, it's giving you, uh, I don't remember this word in, in, in English as well. So a, a, big, a lot of levels and uh, uh, people will go from the concert, going back home, uh, not with the uh, feeling of two, 2D, it will be 3D or 4D or 5D. It helps to go deeper in their uh, unconsciousness. Thank you for that. Hi, Fi, do you want to jump in? I have a couple quick questions for you. Um, the first one, have you been to Cleveland yet? Yeah, Cleveland, of Ohio. Did they treat you yeah. well? <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> we, we burn it. <laughs> nice. People didn't uh, want to let us go. They said, no, you, yes. are, you, are, not, you are Cleveland people. <laughs> nice. Good. I, Cleveland is my hometown, so. Yeah. yeah I, it's, I, I want to make sure place. they treated you, you know, well. Cle Cle Cleveland in my heart. Oh. Yeah, it's amazing. Beautiful. There's amazing people there. And, you know, we uh, in Cleveland, uh, not just about the concerts, because we have, uh, like, an example, one of the concerts where it was just American people, and uh, the youngest people on this concert was about 60 years. Wow. And it was about 500 people. They're crying. They're hugging. It, they were so <laughs> happy. And it was very uh, important for us because, you know, it, uh, it's that kind of audience who saw a lot of different things in their life. And to impress them, is you need to you need to work on that. <laughs> you need to yes. bring your A again. Okay. Happen. So my follow-up to that, um, as you travel the United States, one of the things I worry about is Americans don't pay attention sometimes to the rest of the world. Are you finding that more and more Americans are realizing that Ukraine is fighting for the entire world yeah. and Russia must you know, be stopped? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, we have a lot of messages inside the concert. So uh, yeah. even if somebody don't understand that, in the end of the concert, they understand. And sometimes we have conversation like with the with the different people, like uh, the staff of Senator. Uh, it was in actually it was in Cleveland. Uh, uh, we spoke with the uh, right hand of Senator, and uh, he was in the beginning. He tell uh, a lot of like Russian narratives, uh, but we spoke with him. We show him. We show him different videos. Yuri sang there, the guys playing. Uh, I spoke with him, and in the end, he is he changed his mind, wow. and he yeah, and like you know, I told you that uh, I have a, a big experience in uh, in neurolinguistics, yeah. uh, so I understand uh, uh, how to. Uh, how to see the results without the words. So uh, I can say like uh, uh, like a specialist that he changed his mind because uh, he ch uh, he, his face was changed. His uh, type of mimic was changed. Wow. His pose was changed. And his tone of voice was changed. So it works. So that's why we need to, to do this work more and more. And we're yes. planning. We're planning how to uh, send more and more powerful uh, uh, dance uh, collectives from Ukraine who will not just uh, bring uh, entertainment, no, who will bring new convinces, yes. new values, new kind of values. Because I understand that actually it's uh, not just a problem like about uh, Americans, that Americans don't think in uh, that uh, in Ukraine it's a uh, global war. It's actually is the problem of Ukraine. Is the problem of Ukraine at first because uh, we understand that we see that. So if a lot of Americans don't understand that, it's been that we didn't do our work so good. We didn't bring this information. We didn't find the ways to bring this information yet. So and 
I understand that, that and I, I understand responsibility about that. And so right now I'm I'm creating the plan and creating this and scenario right. to, to bring that. Your final words to your poem that you read in DC, we managed to beat the enemy and now we will teach everybody to love. We will multiply love in the world. So it's the purpose of our victory. We talk on our show a lot about part of what we are dealing with is a war that takes away love, a war on empathy, a war on kindness and all that is good. Why was it important for you to end your poem on how multiplying love in the world is the purpose of this victory? Because, you know, when you feel the breeze of death, uh, you understand much more about life. You understand much more about what uh what has a real price or what we have just just for entertain like what what we have just to uh short the distance from the uh birthday to from the birth birthday to the day of death when you feel in the bliss of that you understand that the things on which you need to concentrate is of course, the love uh, is, uh, is is the love to your uh, lovers, uh, is the love to your relatives, to your uh, parents, to your children, to your brothers, sisters. It's about the romantic love. It's about the love to, to your friends. Friends shaking hands. Say, how do you do? They really say, I love you. Yeah. And... Uh, it's about the love to yourself, to for what, what you was created. Because uh, when you understand that you can die in every minute, you begin to ask yourself, for what I exist at all? And you, uh, with the answer on this question, honest answer, you understand that and you begin to uh, value your life. You begin to value with everything you come here. So it's all about the love. Thank you so much for that. Guys, do you have anything else? Um, I, I I did want to just bring, bring up that uh, America, um, and I've studied this a lot, has been under assault by Russian psychological warfare for a very long time. Um, and what the, the way I sort of see the world as basically is a narrative war um uh at least from my point of view between these forces of of darkness um and the actual truth um and i just wanted to to say out loud that that i appreciate you bringing the that narrative war here uh because we need people to understand it and to start participating in it and to follow your example um, and and start speaking truth to power about what's actually happening. Um, and I, I, I guess I just wanted to get your your thoughts on, do you, do you think of it as sort of narrative psychological warfare in, in a sense? Um, because uh, honestly, um, I, I, that, I do, <laughs> I was just curious. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, Ukraine has a big uh, level of resistance, and uh, we do it. We're doing that uh, uh, not systematically. We're doing that uh, more because we know it, uh, these attacks, psychological attacks uh, on Ukrainian uh, Russian psychological attacks, help. Uh, Help us to understand what is important for us. You know, we are like we don't have armor from that. They doing that professionally, and uh, it's like all the bullets, uh, psychological bullets from Russian, uh, uh, from Russian uh, psychological guns, like going straight into our body. It's not about how we do like that or. Yeah, everybody comes there, and we. Uh, but the power of life, 
inside the collective unconscious of Ukrainian is so strong, so it, it can lead with this balance. And when we understand that uh, we're trying to take it off, with that we understand how to heal. So that's why uh, we become healer, at first healer to ourselves. And then I'm sure for all the world, because we, we will share this. It's not about the aggression. It's not how to resist uh, Russian uh, psychological attacks. No, it's about how uh, how to to make your own resistance, which will work with every type of attacks. Uh, from the enemy, from yourself, no matter. You yeah. just begin, become much bigger. Can you can you just um, tell Americans anything you want us to know about um, how important it is to support Ukraine? I think uh, uh, the main thing that when you're supporting Ukraine, you're supporting the kind in the world. You're supporting your soul. So how you With uh, all the understand uh, understanding of what is going on in Ukraine, how you treat Ukraine right now, how you treat the kind in Ukraine, uh, is the way how you treat your soul. So it's about your souls. About myself, that uh, uh, how I treating my country, my my Ukraine right now. I know that it's, it's my con connection and my treating my soul. For me, it, it's important. For me, my soul is very important. We need to treat our democracy in America as if it's sacred instead of being divided. And I think that this interview is going to help us do that. I want to thank Thanks. you so much for your time. Thank you to the gentleman that you're traveling with. And uh, Slava Ukraini, I don't know what else to say. You know, I'm Slava. <laughs> Школах, в палацах, позашкільна освіта, освіта, інститути. І діти, коли дізналися, що я потрапив на фронт, вони почали передавати через мене вітання героям. Готові? Добре. Тоді уважно. Вітання від дітей. Моє ім'я Валерій Дзех. Я військовослужбовець 59-ї бригади, а також є учасником культурного десанту, і я там лялькар. Я хочу, щоб військові в якийсь момент просто опинилися в своєму дитинстві, щоб вони згадали, що таке дитинство, що таке мріяти і що таке створювати, будувати. Крок за кроком. Іти вперед до своєї мети. Небе на коза, на юрна та й соле, на ріа серена, до бона там песта. Пела ріа фреска, паре джія на феста. Кебе на коза, на юрна та й соле.